This is solving equations by completing the square. Now, if you watch the video on solving quadratic equations by taking the square root, this will look familiar to you. And if you haven't watched that video, I would suggest you do so you understand what's going on in this one. This says x minus 2 quantity squared equals 18. If you have something squared equals whatever, doesn't matter what this number is over here, something squared, you can solve by taking the square root of both sides. If you take the square root of the x minus 2 squared, you get x minus 2. When you solve by taking a square root, remember you pick up a plus or minus. Now you look at the square root of 18, and that is something that simplifies out with a factor tree. Here's your factors. We have a pair of 3, so a 3 is coming out, with a 2 staying in, and of course the plus or minus is still there. We need to solve by adding 2 to both sides, which gives us this. Now be careful, 2 plus 3 doesn't go together to make 5. These are not like terms. This is your final solution. This is everything we did in the solving equations by taking the square root. Well, the reason this works so nicely is because this is something squared. Well, what happens if it's not? What if you have something like this? Well, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is special because it can be written as something squared. We just have to come up with what this something is. And this is just a factoring idea. If you think about plain old factoring rules, you know you'd have to have an x and an x in the front. And what multiplies to give you 9, that adds to give you 6, is 3 and 3. And because this is positive and the middle is negative, we know that the sign in both the parentheses is negative. Well, x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x minus 3 squared. And there we are. We're at the point where we can take the square root of both sides. The square root of x minus 3 squared is just x minus 3. When you take the square root of 2, it just stays the square root of 2, but we have the plus or minus in front. Undo this by adding 3 to both sides, which gives you a final answer of 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 12. What it equals over here doesn't matter. What matters is that this right here can be factored into something squared. And what this factors into is x plus 2 squared. Now, where does this x plus 2 squared come from? Well, what we ought to look at is the fact that x squared is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. And here's the important thing. If you take the square root of this number, square root of 4 is 2, and if you do 2 times 2, we get 4, which is that middle number. That's what tells us that we're going to be able to factor this as some quantity squared. Now that it's written as some quantity squared, we can just follow the rest of those other steps, take the square root of both sides. We get x plus 2 on the left side. We have plus or minus the square root of 12 here. Square root of 12 factor trees out like this. We have a pair of 2s, so there'll be a 2 in the front. And then we're going to just have to move this 2 over by subtracting 2 from both sides, and we have negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. These are the previous two examples, and we need to look at why they are so easily factored into this something squared. Not everything can be factored into this something squared. If it can be factored into something squared, it is called a perfect square trinomial. And how you know you have a perfect square trinomial is you have x squared in the front, and the last number is a perfect square. Now the middle term has to have a special relationship to the last number, and here it is. If you take the square root of the last number, square root of 4 is 2, and you multiply it by 2, if that gives you the middle number, you know you have a perfect square trinomial. And where this multiplying by 2 comes in is the idea that Instead of thinking of this as x plus 2 squared, you are thinking of it x plus 2 times x plus 2. And if you foil this out, you have a 2x in the middle, you have a 2x on the outside, you actually have two of these two x's. That's why the multiplying by 2 idea works for the middle. So take a look at this. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 2 gives us 6. Because this was a minus here when I write my squared quantity, it needs to be x minus 3. So let's take a look and see if these are perfect square trinomials. You look at the x squared in the front, that's good. You look at 16 in the back, that's good. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 2 does give me 8. That says this is a perfect square trinomial. I can write this as x plus 4, where the 4 comes in, is that was the square root of the back number squared. So this is one that I would be able to continue by taking the square root of both sides. Take a look at this one. 25 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10, which does not equal 8. 
So that says this is not a perfect square trinomial. So to be able to use the square root method of solving, we need the left side or the right side, doesn't matter, I'm just saying the left side. We need the left side to be a perfect square trinomial. Here's the deal, if it is not a perfect square trinomial, we are going to do this complete the square process to make it into a perfect square trinomial. So take a look at this, x squared minus 6x minus 4 equals 3. You look at 4 and you think, oh, it's a perfect square. The problem is that's a minus 4. So no matter what happened with the middle, this is not a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial must have a positive last term. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. So I need to do a little bit of work to make the left side turn into a perfect square. That's why we call this process completing the square. This last number is not what I want it to be, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to do the usual get rid of it idea, and that is do the opposite, which is add 4 to both sides. What that does is cancels the 4 out of here, just moves the 4 over to this side, making this a 7. And this is what I write. I do x squared minus 6x plus blank, because we are going to put something in that blank that is a perfect square. 3 plus 4 is 7 plus blank. We're getting ready to put something in this blank. And whatever we add to the left side, we must add the exact same thing to the right side. That's why in this step on the setup, I would put plus blank, plus blank, so that you remind yourself to add something to this side also. we got to think about what's going to go here. We need something here that is a perfect square, but we need it to be the right number to go with 6. And there's a very simple process. You don't have to do a lot of trial and error. It's a very simple process. All you have to do is take half of this coefficient in front of x and square it and add that number to both sides. So half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. That's the number I'm going to add to both sides. Take half of that middle number and square it and add it to both sides. That's all you have to do to come up with the appropriate number. Double check that that, that works. That 9 is a perfect square because we got it by squaring this number we took half. And the reason we take half is because when we were checking to see if something was a perfect square on the previous screen, we doubled it. So we're just working our way backwards. Once it's written like this, it's going to be downhill from here because we can do 7 plus 9 is 16. And we can think about this being something squared because we've created this to be a perfect square trinomial. What number goes right here? Well, it's 3 because what number did we square to get 9? 3. We have x minus 3 squared. Now we can take the square root of both sides. Square root of x minus 3 squared is x minus 3. And the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. Let's solve this by adding 3 to both sides, which gives us 3 plus or minus 4. I want to remind you that you don't just put the plus 3 right here and call this plus or minus 7. We talked about that in the other video. Because there's no radical or imaginary left in this problem, we can do what I call the high road and the low road. The high road refers to using the plus sign between the 3 and the 4. The low road refers to using the minus sign between the 3 and the 4. So x equals 3 plus 4, that's the high road. Or x equals 3 minus 4, which is the low road. Do your simple arithmetic and you get x equals 7 or x equals negative 1. The reason you are getting two solutions is because this is x squared. This is definitely not a perfect square trinomial. You have this positive 11 at the end, so we want to get rid of that 11 by subtracting 11 from both sides. That's going to cancel out. We're going to have a negative 8 on the right side. So now we have x squared plus 8x plus blank equals negative 8. What goes in the blank is our two-step process. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So that's the number we will add to both sides. Gives us this. This is now something that we can factor as something squared. Simple arithmetic over here is just 8. What we squared to get 16 is 4. So this is x plus 4 squared equals 8. And now we can take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of 8, you're going to have to do a factor tree on that. 8 breaks into 2 times 2 times 2. Here's your pair of 2's. That's why a 2 came out. Don't forget your plus or minus. Over here, the square root of something squared is x plus 4. Just get the x alone by subtracting 4 from both sides, which gives you as your final answer negative 4 plus or minus 2 radical 2. And you do have two answers. You have negative 4 plus the radical, and you have negative 4 minus the radical. 